All right, so All right, we're yeah. a couple of minutes past the hour. So do you want to take us away, James? Yeah, please. I think it's uh, 10.02 here. It looks like we've got uh, most of everyone who has signed up. And so definitely let's get going. Welcome, everyone. Thank you very much for uh, joining us today on what we hope to be a very informative and slightly interactive uh, discussion here as well. Um, today, we're going to talk about floor care and um, the general agenda is pretty simple. We're going to uh, talk a little bit about Fluso, who I am, who Chris is. Um, we are going to discuss the rise of cordless in the floor care industry and why we're focusing in this area. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to cover a few of the challenges that we see in cordless as well as uh, in airflow sensing within cordless vacuum cleaning. Then we're going to cover the benefits of mass flow sensing and um, how we think the FLS 110 can actually help you to overcome a few of the challenges that we'll discuss. And then finally, we'll close with a quick demo and a video from Chris here and then open it up for Q&A. So with that general housekeeping, we're expecting this to be about a 30 minute presentation, hopefully at least 15 minutes of Q&A. Um, you are going to be muted for the, the, the majority of the presentation here until the end, but please do submit your questions throughout. Um, submit them in that team chat anytime and we'll try and uh, take a peek at those and answer them as, uh, as we can get to them. Uh, to answer your first question that you haven't asked yet, yes, you will get a copy of the presentation. You will get a copy of this recording. And so you can share that hopefully around your organization if you like what you hear. And then finally, um, there will be a survey at the end. Please do take a minute to let us know how we did in the good old fashioned spirit of continuous improvement. Um, always looking for feedback. So hopefully uh, you'll find this uh, again informative. And whether you did or did not, please let us know. So with that uh, general overview of Fluso here, uh, we, have, we are a fabless semiconductor uh, flow sensing company. If you'll switch slides, please. Um, and we are designed around low cost, high volume applications. So we are more than happy to take on any project for anybody on the phone today. Um, but in general, we've designed our entire company to build scale and drive down the cost of flow sensing in very high volume applications. And you'll see that as we talk about some of our winning applications in the future. So um, we were founded in 2016 out of Cambridge University. And uh, that means two different things. One, we have access to some really state of the art technology, which helped us to develop this technology. And uh, we also have access to over 20 scientists, engineers, PhDs, and just experts in the industry who uh, saw some problems and some issues with how we are measuring flow today and tried to solve those problems uh, together. So a really nice collaboration that we think came up with a really great product. Um, so 2021 is our first launch year and we're off to a pretty good start here so far. Uh, we have applications in consumer appliance and that includes vacuum cleaners, also hair dryers. Uh, we are getting uh, some traction going on air quality. Clearly, uh, air, air purifiers are growing at a pretty rapid rate right now. Um, so we're having a lot of interest from uh, that space. And then on the industrial safety side, um, powered air respirators, gas detection, things of that nature. So just making sure pipes are not blocked and that flow is moving appropriately. And finally, on the medical side, um, some CPAP applications as well as in inhaler opportunities. So um, we're finding some success across the board. Basically anybody moving or harnessing the power of air uh, and they want to understand what that data looks like, those are the folks that are, are taking a peek at this FLS 110 uh, for their applications. Now, in particular, we're talking about floor care today and we are focusing this on cordless. And why we're focusing on cordless is the compound annual growth rate is obviously significantly higher here than the vacuum cleaner that I grew up with. So I plugged in my hose to my wall, I plugged in my electricity into the wall and um, it was a different world back then. Now robotic vacuum cleaners are growing at over 15%, handheld vacuum cleaners are growing at 12%. And so as the uh, the marketplace has adjusted and changed and migrated towards uh, these types of applications, we feel that uh, 
there's been a trade-off now. You're no longer plugged into the wall. So there's a trade-off between power and performance. So uh, with, with regards to specific challenges, um, let's talk about performance first. We see that different materials require different levels of suction. Different levels of suction require different levels of power. So uh, if you start on a hard floor, move to a deep pile carpet, we've seen performance drop up to 20% in the flow. And um, so what that means is customers might be getting stuck on hardwood floors where there's too much power, too much suction. They might be pulling up the ends of rugs and getting frustrated with that. And then they move to the deep pile of carpet and they find themselves pushing, going back and forth over and over. Um, so they're either getting stuck or redoing work um, depending on what surface they're on. And there's no real way to customize uh, their performance on the different surface requirements. So what do they oftentimes do? They just turn on that boost mode or they plug in the max power and they suck as hard as they can for as long as possible and they never bother turning it off. So what this does is shortens the battery life and uh, then they find themselves interrupting their cleaning in order to charge their product or uh, they're halfway through their living room and they have to stop or they get frustrated with the actual performance of the vacuum cleaner because it's no longer performing at the level that they thought it was uh, that they thought it was supposed to perform at. Um, then the, we also have efficiency is another problem we see in the marketplace. Uh, clogged filters obviously have always been an issue, but those interrupt interrupt work as well. And as the filter clogs, it silently degrades performance. So. Um, I actually just had a forgot to change the filter in my air conditioner yesterday and rather than spending another $20 on a filter I had to have somebody come out I had leakage all over my basement and um, that was all because of a clogged filter poor airflow I didn't know it so I ended up spending hundreds of dollars on a fix and the guy just gave me an air filter so um, Hopefully some of the things that we have coming forward here will help uh, solve those issues in the vacuum cleaner space as well for uh, users like myself who don't like to change filters. <laughs> um, so first and foremost, we believe direct mass flow sensing can solve some of these issues. Um, the way that's gonna happen is we're gonna automatically help you adjust your flow based on the surface requirements to improve, improve that cleaning efficacy. So basically, if you're on a smooth space, we're gonna drop the power consumption, save on the battery life. If you're on deep pile carpet, we're gonna increase the power and increase this, uh, the cleaning performance. So you get customized and optimal performance with absolutely no manual intervention by measuring your flow. When it comes to power here, uh, that constant flow adjustment can be based on uh, our, our constant flow adjustment based on the floor need will help save energy and extend that battery life. So we're not overdrawing when it's not necessary. We're not underdrawing anymore either. The Goldilocks principle, it's just right all the time with no manual intervention. Then uh, again, with regards to filtration, we're gonna monitor that filtration status to optimize your flow throughout the job and also encourage changeovers between those jobs. So what that means in the first half is we're gonna compensate for clogs. As that clogs up, we can increase the power draw, increase the flow, make sure the performance of the vacuum cleaner uh, maintains. And then we can throw off a light or some sort of warning that says, hey, um, it's time to change the filter. If you don't want to uh, get interrupted in your next job, change it now um, so you can speed up your work time when it comes to uh, your next uh, your next cleaning. So mass flow sensing can help. Uh, many of you guys probably know that already. Um, so then the question is, why are we not all using mass flow sensors today? And this is where those guys at Cambridge really um, came up with a nice, uh, a nice solution. So they found that many options out there were either over-engineered or overpriced, or they were over-engineered, which is why they were overpriced. So um, we found that many options have redundant hardware. So they come with maybe microcontrollers and some other things that you guys already have in your systems, 
or perhaps they come pre-calibrated, but then you put them in your systems and have to calibrate them anyway. So what's the point of paying for the pre-calibration and all that extra hardware when it's not doing you any good? So we've really simplified our offering. Um, we also found that the integration complexity was uh, more than we desired. So many of the options out there were too big with too many interface limitations. So what that means is your designers had to either make space in their systems, make room, redesign, and do a bunch of work to fit in a big bulky sensor. And then we found that uh, our, as we used some of our competitive sensors, we needed to use their interface or their language, their protocol. Um, and so it was a supplier requiring a customer to adapt to their ways of doing business. Um, and we didn't care for that either. Um, then we talk about measuring multiple parameters. Um, most of the options out there are either a speed flow sensor, a differential pressure sensor, a volume flow sensor, a mass flow sensor. So if you want to measure multiple parameters, you need to work with four different products. You might need to work with four different vendors. Um, that just added time complexity um, to the, the overall process. So we found that to be an issue as well. Now, uh, many of you might be calculating flow as well, um, which is fine. However, um, calculating flow can be prone to drift. It can create mistakes and, um, and can cause some inaccuracy. So if accuracy is critical, um, we find a direct flow measurement to be uh, an appropriate step there. And then the other thing that uh, really irked the group was the time to market. So whenever we wanted to do something new, it was a start with a brand new custom design. That custom design uh, took a lot of time and it also required a great deal of interaction with our suppliers. And uh, so we tried to take more of a do it yourself approach. Very simple, very easy. I've got about 10 years in the sensing space maybe uh, six months in airflow sensing in particular here with Fluso. And I was able to get up and running as a rookie in the space in under 30 minutes with, um, with our evaluation kit. So a really nice user-friendly, easy, um, do-it-yourself, uh, support out there. And then we also have Chris and a number of other folks readily available on call as you need. But uh, in general, we feel like you guys can get up and running with the uh, FLS 110 in a matter of minutes, which is a, a key advantage. So we do believe our FLS 110 solution addresses all of these challenges. And uh, Chris is going to explain a little bit more about how that happens. All right. Thank you, James. I hope you can all see and hear me clearly. Uh, my name's Chris. I'm Fluso's Head of Systems and Applications, and it's my job to help uh, our customers get up and running with the FLS 110 as quickly, as easily, as cheaply as possible, and to make sure that they're really getting the most from the technology. So I'm really excited today to be able to take you through some of the highlights of the FLS 110, talk to you a little bit about how the sensor works, um, the architecture of the sensor, and uh, and show you a bit of a demonstration of integrating the FLS 110 into a vacuum cleaner. But first, the highlights. So the real highlight of the FLS 110 is its size. It is the world's smallest flow sensor. It's 3.5 millimeters by 3.5 millimeters. And that means it can fit onto your existing PCBs, into your existing electronics, into your existing products, uh, with the minimum possible impact on weight, and also minimum power consumption, because as you make things smaller, they consume less, consume less power to do, the same, uh, to do the same measurement. The FLS 110 is really accurate, it's really repeatable, and it's very flexible. And it achieves that by having no moving parts, being a solid state, direct mass flow measurement. It's able to measure very, very quickly, up to 250 Hertz. And it can be configured in software as either a mass flow, volume flow, differential pressure, or airspeed sensor. So you can use the FLS 110, as James was saying, to measure lots of different flow parameters across lots of different products. Although we're a relatively new company, because we're fabulous, we are relying on a, a fantastic automotive qualified supply chain. 
that means that we're able to scale up our, our volume of the sensor that we make to very high volumes very easily. We're able to provide really aggressive pricing in volume for high volume applications. And it means that we're able to supply the FLS 110 as an SMT component on tape and reel. And that means that it's suitable for automated pick and place assembly onto your electronics. And it's really a suitable for automated assembly throughout the assembly process to really lower your manufacturing costs. Because we're using those automotive production processes, we're also confident we can deliver to you um, reliability, stability and price that's really class leading. Because the sensor is customized entirely in software, we can offer a much more flexible and customizable offering than uh, many traditional mass flow sensors. We offer a system level calibration, which eliminates the need for precise tolerances and geometries in your flow path. It also eliminates the need for you to pay for a sensor calibration that's done uh, when the sensor is manufactured and instead get the maximum possible accuracy in system. And what we've been able to find is that in some of our competitive evaluations, where we have been put up against much more expensive, um, seemingly uh, fully calibrated sensors, we've still been able to outperform them in accuracy in system because of that system calibration approach. All of the variability that's to do with the system, not the sensor, is taken into account in our calibration. And that means that we're able to deliver uh, much closer to our data sheet sensor specification in system than our competitors and beat them in our competitive evaluations. I want to talk a little bit now about the uh, shared architecture and the digital solution of the FLS 110. So the first thing you'll notice about the FLS 110 is that unlike some traditional mass flow sensors, it doesn't come with a large injection molded plastic component that you have to interface to with flexible tubing. Instead, it's this tiny flow sensing component that's designed to integrate directly into your existing flow path with really the minimum amount of modification. So the only thing that you need to do to be able to integrate the FLS 110 into your product is add a pressure drop element into your flow path. And this can be molded into existing components that you're already making already to minimize the extra cost. And in that, continuing on with that theme of flexibility, we support many different types of pressure drop element. So you can have an orifice plate, you can have a venturi, you can have a laminar flow element. The FLS 110 can work with all of those and our system calibration approach um, takes into account the type of pressure drop element that you're using at calibration time so you get the, the best possible accuracy. The FLS 110 it uses a thermal flow measurement principle. So it's a direct measurement of mass flow and that's critical for floor care applications because the mass flow through the, the system, that mass flow is what's governing the momentum transfer from the airstream to the dust particle. And so that's what's really important for uh, dust pickup efficacy. So having a direct mass flow measurement rather than a, a pressure measurement or a volume flow measurement is really beneficial in floor care particularly. We use the existing resources on a microcontroller that's but probably already in your system, or if it's not in your system, can be added at really, really low cost. We use the resources on that microcontroller to control the flow sensor and make the flow measurement. And what that means is that the control of the sensor and the measurement of the flow is all done in firmware that's running on that microcontroller. And that gives us a, a fantastic amount of flexibility for your application. If you have an application where you need a certain interface, maybe you need an I2C interface or you need a UART interface, we, we can allow you to customize that interface to your heart's content using our SDK. And that will help our sensor fit in with whatever other components you're using in your system already, minimizing that, that difficulty, minimizing that development time and the development cost. If you've already got a microcontroller in the system, you can run our firmware alongside your existing firmware and communicate with the flow sensing firmware over an API. So there's no physical interface at all. It's all happening within the software. And uh, if you've already using a microcontroller in your system, there's no additional cost with the FLS 110 for a, for a host microcontroller. All of these factors, all of these features of this uh, flow sensing solution with a shared microcontroller, 
helps lower the design time and lower the design cost of implementing the FLS 110 in your product. The tiny size of the sensor and the fact that you really don't need to add much in the way of additional componentry to make it work, just a simple pressure drop element molded into an existing part and a few very small, I think it's two uh, passive resistors is all you need to add if you're using a shared microcontroller, really helps reduce the material cost of our, of our solution. And obviously including flow sensing can provide some real benefits for you and for your customers in terms of operating cost by uh, improving that filter changeover, um, filter cleaning cycle so that you're, you're really getting the best performance, the best efficacy from the, from the product all the time. So now I'm gonna try and share with you a demo video which, uh, in which I install the FLS 110, uh, retrofit it into an existing vacuum cleaner. So uh, bear with me while I, while I get that set up. Hi everyone. Today we're going to be demonstrating how you can use the FLS 110 to enable accurate mass flow measurement inside this, a cordless vacuum cleaner. Now for those of you not familiar with the FLS 110, it's the world's smallest flow sensor. We see have a very small PCB here, and even smaller, that tiny black component is the FLS 110. It's 3.5 millimeters by 3.5 millimeters. It's absolutely tiny, and we're gonna be taking this component and installing it into the cordless vacuum cleaner in order to be able to enable accurate mass flow measurement. Now, in order to enable mass flow measurement with the FLS 110, we need a flow fixture. Now, if this product was to be designed with the FLS 110 in mind, obviously the flow fixture would be part of the product already, would be made within the plastics. But because this is a retrofit, I've designed a small 3D printed flow fixture that we can put inside the vacuum cleaner. And it's got, as you can see here, a small orifice plate inside. And that small orifice plate, really just a lip, is all that's required to enable accurate mass flow measurement with the FLS 110. So I'm going to install this flow fixture into this cordless vacuum cleaner. And then we're going to see how the FLS 110 can accurately measure mass flow through the vacuum cleaner during its operation. Now I have the FLS 110 on this small PCB installed into the flow fixture that I showed you earlier. And that flow fixture has been inserted into this cordless vacuum cleaner. Now it's been positioned after the motor and after most of the filters, so we're going to be getting clean air going through the FLS 110, which is what we need. Now typically, in a product, the FLS 110 would communicate over I squared C with other microcontrollers in the product to maintain a target flow set point or to monitor changes in flow. But at the moment, I have the I squared C signal from the FLS 110 coming out over this ribbon cable onto this I squared C to USB adapter. Now I'm going to take this USB adapter and plug it in with a USB extension cable to my laptop so that we can see visually the measurements from the FLS 110 using our evaluation kit software. So here we have the FLS 110 evaluation kit GUI. And if I start the GUI here, we can see that initially we get zero system flow and a system flow temperature of just about 29 and a half degrees centigrade. Now, as I turn on the vacuum cleaner, you can see the system flow rate jumps up to just around 330 standard liters a minute. And if I then restrict the vacuum cleaner with my hand, you can see that the system flow drops down to more like 70 liters a minute. Now, this variable flow rate you might experience that if you're vacuuming on different surfaces. And it's not desirable because the dust pickup efficacy of the cordless vacuum cleaner is really strongly dependent on the mass flow rate that you're able to achieve through the nozzle. Now, what the FLS 110 would allow you to do in this case is to change your motor power to maintain a target mass flow rate. And that would ensure that you have the same dust pickup efficacy no matter whether you're vacuuming hard surfaces 
where you probably need less motor power to pick up dust, or thick pile carpet where you would definitely need more motor power to have the same pickup efficacy. And by modulating your motor power like this over the course of a cleaning session, you can also enable some pretty significant battery life savings by using the power that you save on the hard surfaces to counteract the extra power that you might want to use on deep pile carpet. And so by including the FLS 110 in a cordless vacuum cleaner like this, you can enable both an extended battery life and also improve cleaning performance. All right, so hopefully that video played okay for everybody. Uh, I'm gonna hand back over to James now, who's gonna tell you a little bit more about the key takeaways from this. I appreciate that very much, Chris. So yeah, the uh, the final, the grand finale here, uh, we believe that with a mass flow sensor, specifically the FLS 110, we can help you improve your cleaning performance. We're gonna do that by adjusting and optimizing the cleaning power based on the filtration status and your surface requirements. So automatically no manual inter intervention required to put the right amount of power into um, each different type of surface. Then we're going to help reduce your cleaning duration. Our hope here is we can reduce rework because we're providing the right amount of power to each different area. And we're also monitoring the flow through the filter so that we can predict and uh, provide uh, some assistance for preventative maintenance as well so that they um, are not having to stop and clean their filter while they're working on a job. Um, and then another key from Consumer Reports was the battery life. Um, we can help extend that battery life because we're no longer putting the the vacuum cleaner through max power um, or extended boost mode. Uh, it's taking that away from the operator, automating it so that uh, you'll get longer battery life. And with that longer battery life, obviously comes higher customer satisfaction. Um, so. Finally, um, we're going to ease operations as well. Uh, the hope here is that if you're automatically adjusting that suction, you'll be able to very seamlessly and easily um, transition from one floor surface to the other and um, uh, basically take away the need for, you know, using that boost mode, pushing on the button, holding the button. Um, so just a, a, an overall better user experience. So uh, we can do this with a very miniature low power, low weight, accurate, reliable, stable, um, customizable, easy to use, and low cost flow sensor, uh, no bigger than the, uh, the size of a uh, pencil lead. So um, that's the general idea. That's uh, what we think we can do. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Uh, we have this like call to action here at the end. We've got an evaluation kit that um, we'd like to show you guys here. You saw it in action there. Um, but why don't we just open it up for uh, questions here before we'll close with, uh, with that evaluation kit. Hey, hello, everybody. Um, I have got a couple of questions coming in here on the chat. And feel free to keep on asking questions we uh, I think we've got room for a couple of more um, but the first one is how is the FLS 1110 different or better than differential pressure sensing sure so so I'll take that one uh, particularly in floor care applications um, we can see really large changes in system pressure so depending on the restriction of that nozzle whether you're uh, using a long hose or a short hose um, the different heads that most of these vacuum cleaners come with, um, that can really change the, the system pressure that you see inside, uh, inside the product. And that different system pressure can uh, really affect a differential pressure measurement. And while a differential pressure measurement is giving you a, a measure of the volumetric flow that's going through the product, that different pressure means that the volume flow doesn't always necessarily correspond perfectly to the, to the mass flow that you might want. Uh, with a direct mass flow measurement, uh, we're much less sensitive to the effects of changing system pressure. And particularly in floor care, as I say, where, where those changes can be big, that can give us a, a much more consistent, reliable measurement that's more directly correlated with cleaning efficacy than uh, what you might get from a differential pressure measurement. 
Okay, thank you very much, Chris. Um, got another one for you here. What is the drift of the sensor with respect to time, environmental uh, challenges such as temperature, humidity, etc.? That's a really great question. So in terms of temperature, the sensor is fully temperature compensated. So that means it, it uh, has inside it a temperature sensor, um, which means it's actually able to measure flow temperature if that's something that you're interested in for your application. But we use that flow temperature measurement to compensate the mass flow measurement, um, or all of the measurements, in fact. And that allows us to be uh, really invariant with temperature. We can, we can measure flow accurately across a wide range of temperatures, as low as minus 20 degrees centigrade and as high as 85 degrees centigrade. So uh, that's a real benefit of the, of the sensor. In terms of the drift over time, the material set that we use is incredibly inert. Um, and that gives us a real benefit in terms of that long-term drift. The sensor really has negligible uh, long-term drift. It's, there are, there, you could expect some drift with changes in certain environmental conditions. So if you have really large changes in uh, things like humidity, that can affect the reading. But to manage that, we actually uh, have an automatic calibration procedure that you can do uh, with the sensor it can be done every time the system powers up when there's no flow, and that helps uh, eliminate the effect of uh, those environmental changes. Uh, or if you have a, a way of measuring um, some of those environmental conditions, such as flow pressure or, or humidity, um, there's also opportunity to use our software development kit to uh, compensate for those as well. So uh, really the sensor it has really excellent performance uh, over the longer term for drift and that sort of thing. Okay, they keep on uh, triggling in here, which is great. Just keep on typing, guys. Um, got the next one. Uh, is it fine to use with other gas types like CO2, uh, nitrogen, argon, etc.? Does it have to be calibrated per gas or is it composite gas fine? So the FLS 110, um, as it is provided at the moment, the standard firmware that we provide is uh, optimized for measuring air. But the sensing technology is actually capable of measuring pretty much any inert gas. So if you have a, a speciality gas application that's not air, uh, we can certainly have a discussion with you about how you can go about uh, uh, characterizing the, the sensor and making the various changes to parameters that, that are needed in order to, to measure that. And we've had some really great engagement on speciality gases, including uh, oxygen, uh, helium, argon, and hydrogen. Um, so we're, we're quite used to having these types of, of discussions. So please uh, reach out to, to us and uh, let's start a discussion about your particular gas that you want to measure. Any more questions, Annie? Oh, sorry, I've muted myself to be polite. Sorry about that. No problem. Uh, back to vacuum. Um, is it okay in a vacuum, say minus one bar? Absolutely, yes. So the pressure differential that the, the sensor is uh, tested to is up to three bar differential. So uh, up to three bar difference in pressure between the inside of the package and the outside is going to be absolutely fine. Um, so that will mean, you know, down to down to vacuum is, is no problem at all. If you're using it for very high pressure applications, we have had inquiries uh, for pressures up to 10 bar or sometimes even higher. Um, that's certainly possible. There's a, there's a couple of ways to deal with those high pressure requirements. The first is to make sure that you're applying uh, the right um, compression on the package to, to support it. And the other thing is uh, designing the, uh, the layout of the flow to make sure that the differential pressure across the package doesn't exceed three bar, even while your system pressure might be at 10 bar. And that's simply about making sure that the, the pressure inside and outside the package is somewhat equalized. Okay, thank you. We're on to the no next one. Um, do you have plans to have a metal part for corrosion resistance options? Uh, you, you mean a metal can? Um, well, the, <laughs> uh, well, yes, uh, a, a metal a metal outside part. So uh, currently, the the um, the outside of the sensor is made from uh, an epoxy resin, as you as you can probably tell. Uh, we found that to be, uh, you know, very corrosion resistant for the majority of applications. 
Um, if you have a, an application which is uh, using particularly corrosive gases, um, it's definitely worth speaking to us to make sure that, um, that all of the material set, not just the package, is going to be suitable. Uh, we do test with um, certain corrosive gases. Uh, I think sulfur dioxide is the one that we test with typically. Um, but if you're using particularly corrosive gases, uh, it's worth having a discussion to see if uh, the material set that we're using is going to be suitable for your application. Okay, how do you feel, guys? Have we got time for uh, for another one? Yeah, no problem. Um, we would like to know how is the uh, how is the sensor powered? Yeah, no problem. So the sensor is powered uh, from a 3.3 volt supply. So it uh, it probably shares the same supply as the as the microcontroller in the system that that you might already be using, uh, and it, it draws very very little power. So uh, it only draws power when it's actively measuring. So we can take a measurement in just a few tens of milliseconds, and then you can send the sensor back to idle. And when the sensor is uh, at idle, the sensor component itself draws no power, and the uh, microcontroller that is used to control the sensor uh, will only be drawing its idle current, uh, which obviously if you have that microcontroller in your system already, that's no additional power. And when we're actively measuring, we, we consume anywhere from 12 to 15 milliwatts of power, typically. And uh, as I said, that can be only for a few moments, a few tens of milliseconds when we make the measurement. You okay. can customize the, the power consumption of the device uh, using our SDK by controlling how often and how uh, many measurements you make. Okay, thank you. Um, Chris, I suppose that... Um, the uh, the question that says um, what is the consumption of the uh, what is the, what is the power consumption of the sensor is really what you've already answered right now. So let's it, hop, yeah. yeah, let's hop on to the next one and uh, ask what is the measurement range. Sure. So the measurement range of the sensor is anywhere from um, you know single digit SCCM at the low end in a direct flow application. Uh, all the way up to more than a thousand liters a minute if you're using a bypass configuration. And we find that for most applications, a bypass configuration is what uh, is suitable for, for the majority of customers. And that's where you have this, this pressure drop element that directs a small amount of flow through the sensor. And by measuring that small flow through the sensor, you're able to uh, directly infer the uh, flow through the main system. And that's all done um, automatically by our system calibration that we do. Okay, I just got uh, another one coming in here. Uh, if you buy the chip solution, is it RS232 TTL interface and you just download the JTAG file uh, and up and running? Um, so if you're using our evaluation kit, it comes with absolutely everything you need. So the, the little PCB uh, that you might have seen on that video, um, that uh, controls the flow sensor and uh, makes a digital, takes the measurement and converts that into a digital reading. That reading is communicated over I squared C um, by default. That's our, our typical interface. If you want a different interface that's not I squared C, um, then you can use our software development kit to customize the interface to anything that you desire. That I squared C signal goes to our USB adapter, which just converts it to a USB that you can plug into your laptop. Um, obviously, if you were using it in a product, you would probably either use that I squared C interface um, to communicate with the, with the sensor, or you might actually be running your own code on the same microcontroller that's controlling the flow sensor and communicate with it over an API inside the chip. So that, that's really how, uh, how, it, uh, how it works. As for RS-232, um, that would be uh, an interface that you would, you would want to use our software development kit to, to deploy um, onto, the, onto the solution and customize it for your needs. Okay, I hope that uh, answered that one. And uh, that is the last question that we have for today. And I think uh, maybe that's very good timing, unless uh, you guys have anything you, um, you want to add. Uh, if not, then I'm going to let you two guys uh, finish off and say thank you. All right, perfect. I'm going to uh, let James talk a little bit about the evaluation kit. 
Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. I was going to say, at the, at the end of all this, you can feel free to uh, take our word for it, and we'd love that. But uh, what we'd love even more is that you actually put us to the test. So, like Chris said, it's an all-in-one plug-and-play kit here um, that uh, we can get to you in a matter of days. There's uh, multiple different options depending on what your flow uh, requirements are. But uh, we'd love it if you would give this a shot. Um, all you have to do is reach out to me, again, james.norman at flusoltd.com. And uh, just let me know if you're interested. And I will get you the uh, menu available, and we'll get you out uh, a quote um, to get you up and running and, and to, uh, to put this to the test for yourself. So that's what we'd love to see uh, come out of here. And if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to myself and or Chris. And uh, we are at your beck and call and excited to work with you guys. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, greatly appreciate it.